um, they were opening the line from um, from, Norm from Denmark to Norma, and he wanted a man to to help um, him run this uh, uh, boarding house for the man uh, men, you know. Uh, so he took it, and he went. I got a wire from Leo, say, come up, bring the children, and come. The man that he was working for had scalded himself mm. and had to be in hospital. And he had to run the, uh, the show. Yeah. And he couldn't cook any more than fly in the air. Yeah. And he didn't know anything about that. And would I, I would say, come and bring the children and uh, do, the uh, do the cooking. So I, I had to, I had to go. Just okay. take the two children and. Yeah. and uh, he was at the eight mile. Yeah. He was eight miles out of Denmark, mm -hmm. and he went. Uh, uh, and so, uh, <laughs> I arrived at the uh, uh, at the boarding house in Denmark. Uh, I went to a, a boarding house, you know, it said mm, there. It's in the road now, the, the name Clarkson's, I think. Mm. I went there and got a meal for the for us and the children, and I, pumpkin and all that stuff, and I, I couldn't eat it, you know. It was awful. But anyhow, and I said I was to go to to uh, Darnley, uh, to the, um, my husband uh, was... Uh, uh, out at um, the eight mile. I don't know how I knew, but I must have done. But anyhow, and she went out and I heard her call out to her husband, anyone going out to the eight mile? And uh, uh, he said, oh, um, so and so, uh, uh, she's going out. And so uh, uh, later on, uh, a spring cart, you know, with a, uh, a seat across, uh, uh, came and uh, me and the two children got in it went down and uh, uh, went to, uh, and a young clergyman did too and we were riding merrily along and suddenly I saw the young clergyman jump forward and spring on the shard like that and the shards were going up we were going to be tipped out of the, the back of the thing. We came up from the hall. And he found that the... He, he uh, got out and he found that the... The um, the harness, you know, that was on to it, was tied up with string and it had broken. And he had to go down on the fence and get a bit of wire off the, the fence and, and do it so that we could continue on. <laughs> and you didn't hurt yourself. It was a wonder that we didn't know. If he hadn't been there, yeah. I wouldn't have uh, noticed it out. or anything. We'd been all gone backwards like that, thrown out of the back of the car. Because you're only sitting on on the, the thing across. No safety belts. Right? No. <laughs> and uh, and we went there and. He, he had arranged, uh, we went down to Mrs. Darnley's, yeah. which was a, 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 a oh, mile or so. Same down, you went down to the yes, a, a mile off the, off the road, and he arranged for her to take Betty, um, Ruth, Ruth and, and Richard, and then he took me up, and the, um, the men were in tents, mm -hmm. and there was an old, building at the side of the road it had no doors or windows mm -hmm. it was just the uh, shell boxes of butter boxes of, of tins of jam mm -hmm. uh, and all the things to feed them bags of sugar and uh, um, and, stacking, yeah. and uh, all that sort of thing and it was all stacked in this um, place and there was a stove there well and I was to, had to produce a dinner that night, and I'd never cooked for, and in Australia, mm. and, and knew nothing about it. 
thankfully Mrs. Darnley had a little tiny paperback uh, cookery cookery book which she she gave me because I must have told her that I was scared stiff you know uh, yeah. and I went and and the best part of it was he had to go back with them and he le and he left me there to carry on and who didn't know nothing about it and an old Scotchman <laughs> who just come out of the army you know jock to help me and and you did everything in kerosene tins, you know. Um, and I had to. Um, what did you do? I had to make a dinner somehow. I you got and, and uh, I remember Jock saying, "We were a bit too generous that time. It didn't go round the the soup. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we mustn't. Uh, we mustn't. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was a nice chap. He did his best mm -hmm. to." Okay. to help me and he waited on the men you know I don't know oh uh, uh, a nightmare but anyhow a day or two I don't think it was only a day or two after, and and Leo all the men were in tents but he had a tent for him but he'd never put it up we had it spread out on the on the floor and uh, there were uh, the the pl thing was made of um, of ads wood, you know, just rough um, uh, boards, yes. uh, and the floor was too, and so it was up and down like that. And we uh, had the tent uh, that one put up spread on the floor uh, to sleep on, and boxes of butter. Uh, piled up this side of us, this side of us, and, and an open space there with no door. <laughs> you know. mm. <laughs> oh dear! And then we'd only been there a day or two. I don't know whether it was two days. I don't know when they were shifting days. camp. When they were shifting camp. You always have to cut every man a crib. Mm. One of j meat, one of jam, one of cheese, and a piece of cake if you've got it. Mm. And I had to. I don't know whether it might have been a, a few days were there, but anyhow, I, I couldn't, hadn't slept with being on this thing. And you know, the morning we were to go, I slept in. I, I'd gone to sleep at last, <laughs> and there I was, cutting s sandwiches and packing them up, mm -hmm. each one a crib for thirty men mm -hmm. or more, you know. Mm -hmm. And they were taking it, everything away as they uh, were doing it, taking all everything down, all the all the pots and pans and the. Uh, the gear, you know, taking it, and then we were loaded onto a onto a, a big truck, and I sat with the driver, and we went into the bush, all over where they just ground. cut it, cut the bush down, you know, and you <laughs> up, and down to, up to the ceiling and down to the floor, and then when you when they got there. They set uh, up a, a galley, two forks with a stick across, you know, and you hang kerosene tins. This was your kitchen. Yeah. Ker you hang kerosene tins down on it. And they put two big trees, mm -hmm. logs, and light a fire there, and you have all the, all the kerosene tins. One for soup. One for greens, one for potato, one for soup, and, and one for water. And how were the wages? Hey, eh? how were the wages? I don't. Oh, we had what we could. Uh, um, they paid us thirty bob a week, I think. You know, each man. That was our. Uh, 
and of course then you see we'd be at the 8 mile the 16 mile the 21 keep on moving on with the line as yes. the fallers yeah. as the fallers went yeah. we went and uh, what dad did the what what did actually dad do dad helped me he waited on the men oh, I see. Carried the, uh, and then yeah. helped with washing up and mm. uh, that yeah. mm. you the general hands like the fire you know and, and then how long were you in that job for and I got pregnant too again yeah. and then we couldn't afford to pay for both uh, because we weren't making anything because the uh, the grocer and the butcher had to bring our stuff out mm. and they charged colossal mm. and even sixpence for the the box you didn't have to pay that did you yes why we had to buy everything no but you knew you worked for someone to do no that. we it became ours because this man uh, went to hospital and no uh, the the government supplied the utensils yeah. you know and the tent and you supplied all the meat food mm -hmm. and you had to pay for the food and then what you made and of course we never made anything you had to buy the food and everything yeah well, that was a bad job what so you had to get out of that job because we didn't know the ropes no. we were much too generous you know and as i say and the butchers and the uh, knuckles and all those you know in denmark they used to charge us mm -hmm. all those you know in denmark they used to charge us mm -hmm. through the nose you know mm -hmm. we had to get milk from a farm and everything we had to pay it all that we never made anything so we're in debt and how long were you there for then? a year we were on the line practically because we went there yes and uh, uh, at Christmas uh, just after uh, yes just after Christmas, we um, we um, it uh, came to the normal up, mm. finished the line. So then uh, we gave it up. We were in debt, and had you, you had the two. You were in debt, and you expecting and John, and expecting John. Grandma came down just before we finished she loved it she, we made her a, we had a nice tent for her mm -hmm. you know uh, but it's like a nice little white room mm -hmm. you know and uh, some kerosene boxes for a dressing table and we had brought the iron bed that we had and we ha had an iron bed for her and she used to take the two children into the tent and read to them you know and it was all bush you know and she used to come into the into the uh, big we had a big marquee mm. to, to uh, feed the men in and she she loved the uh, big roast dinners you know she loved the roast dinner she, she thought she thought it was lovely and, uh, and granddad did the painting when he was there didn't he? Eh? Granddad. no granddad wasn't there or just grandma came only out. grandma because i was expecting the baby oh i see she came to down to look because i and and i sent her up the money and she bought some brought me down some night dresses and napkins for the new baby and we finished how did you, we come to the end of the line the fallers and if you're in debt how did you pay the debts we never did mm. we owed plaza and then the baby came and then then so we had to uh, the they packed everything up all the utensils and everything and took all the tents down and everything all went back to the government you see and dad was going to put us up a tent in Norma I grandma was there with me and <laughs> and he would have to go and find work see so uh, there was the old shack down there 
that had been the old post office. Mm -hmm. It was made of ads wood, you know. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. And it had no windows in it. It had the place where they... It had been the post office. Yes. It was two rooms. And a, a back veranda, like. But with no... Uh, Denmark or Norna. Norna. Yes. But it had no... And attached... Um, no, it had the tin roof. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had no no stove or um, only a big fire stove or um, only a big fireplace, you know, a big uh, open place, you know, tin one, and a hearth. It had a veranda on it, mm -hmm. the, uh, but a dirt floor, you know, and it wasn't fenced or anything. No. It was just standing there uh, by the side of the road, you know. So you stayed there. So uh, Mrs. Plotter said, why not? I'll stay there, you know, instead of uh, in a tent. So we took our few possessions that we had, Grandma and I and the two children, and Leo went off to look for work. He, did, he didn't stay there. No. See, he left us there. <coughs> we, had, we had no money, but we had a bag of, pota bag of potatoes, a box of butter, a box of tins of jam, sugar, tea, I had that. Mm. And we had a camp oven. You know one of those camp ovens? Those round pots? Mm. And so Grandma and I uh, uh, there. And I used to go and uh, I used to have to go right across a long way. You know, Mr. Uh, Harrison was there, living near the beach, um, the river. Mm. He had a lovely little place he had. And there was a, he had a soap, a well, you know, a hole. And he said, you can't get any water out of there because there's a snake in it. See? But you know, but you know, I, I never woke up to the fact that it was because he didn't want us to use his uh, water. And I used to have to go, oh, right over, quite a long way, hmm, um, thing, with a kerosene tin, and, and dip it out of a hole uh, there that Mr. Prosser's um, men uh, that were working for him on the land, you know, guard, um, <coughs> yeah. market garden, there was a, a soak there. And I used to have to... This is expecting. Too. And I was expecting. I used to have to carry it out of a... For, for every drop that we ate, drank and washed and everything. Anyhow, made ourselves, you know, we um, gathered wood and made a fire and, uh, uh, you know, did. Um, experimented with the camp oven mm. because we'd never uh, cooked with a camp oven mm. you know you put the hot coal you have it on the hot coal and you put hot coals on the lid and, and grandma and i we uh, one day we uh, boiled some ham because we had mm. uh, you see you still had the bacon and mm. ham and stuff uh, that was left over <coughs> and we boiled the ham and we experimented and made some scones in this camp oven and uh, some strawberry strawberry uh, tarts mm. we had some strawberry jam from our plazas i think mm. and we made some little tarts and in the in the camp oven mm. and suddenly who should appear but dad and two gentlemen that he got a lift mm. and he'd come there. And they were so surprised. We gave them this lovely feed of uh, ham mm. and, and, and scones and, and uh, jam tart. Yes. Uh, you know, they couldn't believe their eyes. This old shack mm. at the side of the road. Anyhow, they had a good feed and Dad went on with them again. Where did he get you then? He was looking for work, mm. hadn't found any. Still on the road. So what happened then? One morning I thought to myself, I'll, uh, instead of 
carrying all the water to do the washing from there to there. The Italians used to do their washing, uh, light a fire, you know, the men, light a fire near the soak and do their washing there. So I thought, I'll go and do the same. So I t took, got up very early in daylight and went over there, made a fire and uh, did the washing over there. When I got back, oh, I was greeted with, uh, Grandma thought I'd gone to commit suicide. And, and she'd been up to Mrs. Plaza, who lived up the road, to, to, and they couldn't find, they didn't know where I was. And they thought I, you know, I suppose, <laughs> being uh, in the family way and gone off in that. What were they sorry? Oh, they were angry with me for not telling, telling Grandma. But you see, I, I never thought of, about it. No, I just was getting up and doing the washing and uh, coming back. And I think it was the next day, I said, um, I had a show, so I said, I'll have to uh, go. And do you know that the, the uh, plazas had been up to, to exchange their car, they'd been up to Perth all that week. There was no way of getting anywhere. And Grandma was having 50 fits that so she'd have to be midwife. Because there was no one within Kiri. anywhere. No one at all. No. <laughs> and the women yeah. uh, at there uh, had gone up to Perth with the car. But as luck would have it, they came back the night before, the, on the Friday mm. night. And, and John, and I said, I'll have to go. Mrs. Plaza, uh, she was doing her washing too, because she'd been up to Perth. You can imagine. She was. So she took the two children to uh, stay with, uh, with uh, Maisie. Maisie was look after the children. Mm -hmm. Maisie oh, Plaza. Right, yeah. She's not a lady now, like me. <laughs> she was a young girl of 16, yes. and she was uh, she used to go to the convent in Albany, mm. uh, border for her, mm, you know. But she was home because uh, it was Christmas, yeah. Christmas holidays, mm. and so she would look after the um, two children, the two children, and uh, Mrs. Mrs. Um, Plaza Arthur mm. had to drive the car, and Mrs. Plaza one side of me, and. <laughs> and, uh, and and grandma on the other side, and I was in labour, mm -hmm. and I was just keeping my legs together and, and letting it. Uh, and she came on there, hurry, uh, hurry, oh, 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 hurry, <laughs> and thirty-two miles. <laughs> and you know, a man would come along on something and stop and speak to him. Oh, <laughs> Tearing her hair and gnashing her teeth. And then they got me to the, the Denmark, wasn't it? The Denmark hospital. the hospital. The matron was there by herself. Labour ward was empty, there was yeah. no one else in there. And the two nurses, that, she and the two nurses ran the hospital, and they were out playing tennis it was Saturday afternoon. And, uh, and she was there on their own. <laughs> she put me straight away. In the, they had one end like for labour and, and put me on the on the street on the table uh, bed mm -hmm. bed and she said she said don't say it didn't go uh, coming you know now uh, after all I said oh, both me and the baby are tired too tired <laughs> he we've been both I've been keeping him back and he'd been trying to get there mm -hmm. all, all that way. Mm -hmm. I said it'll he'll be all it'll be all right when he's had a rest, mm. you know. And so we uh, as well after I'd had a rest started again. And uh, it was just uh, about over 
when the two nurses arrived, arrived and uh, but uh, it was all thing. and uh, uh, the matron said there's midwifery for you all over only one sheet and that's in the copper because <laughs> <laughs> they had to do their own washing in those days and this is in March wasn't it yes the 10th <laughs> oh, only one so sheet that's in the copper and how long were you in the hospital uh, well, I, I was in there and suddenly who should come in but um, this was Denmark you know because they didn't know this was happening did they? no and, and suddenly uh, who should come in but uh, Leah he come into Denmark and one of the men who knew him or, uh, or knuckled or, you know because he knew the the tradesmen you know the shopkeepers and someone met him and said you know you've got a son <laughs> and he uh, he went and fetched uh, Father Gilroy, who happened to be there mm -hmm. for St. Patrick's um, ball mm -hmm. uh, evening, they oh, had was the 17th, of, um, and he had to bury someone or something. And you know, he only used to, you remember, we used to not have a mass mm -hmm. once in five weeks because he used to go out there. Yes. And uh, he met Father Gilroy and he brought him in. Mm -hmm. And he, he was nice, you know. I hadn't met him, of course, no. before. No. And, well, there, and you haven't lost the feather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he got to the baby then. So uh, he said, uh, Would I like to have the baby baptized? And so he said, I'll, I'll come, I'll fetch a, um, um, come back tomorrow and uh, baptize. Oh, no, well, it might have been that day. That day, I think. But he came back with Miss Arthur. His sister brought us a glass jug and a dish and some water. And uh, he baptized him. And so what did Dad do then? And Dad went off again. Yeah. yeah. Well, after a day or two, I received a letter from him mm -hmm. and in it was a, 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 a ten, ten pound note mm. and he told me to send five of it to grandma uh, by the carrier and tell her to come to Albany and bring the children and we had Ted the dog and the with the other I was to come get the train to Albany. This was in Minion Hospital wasn't it? Yeah. That was on the tenth day. Mm -hmm. uh, that was I was to go on the tenth mm -hmm. day. So on the tenth day I staggered her out of the hospital, you know, they keep you in bed yeah. most of the time, yeah. no yeah, day. Okay. You're as weak as a kitten. Yeah. I, I, uh, Grandma had bought this, uh, some nightgowns and things, you know, that I sent the money up to Perth. She brought them down, you mm -hmm. see. And, and she was out there with the, with the children. So um, I, I got the, um, uh, got on the train. Oh, I remember how weak I was because I had to go to the station master and you know there was no station there. It was in the middle, the lines were like that and, and you know what a train's yeah. like? Yeah. And uh, there, I mean, there was a, a gentleman in the carriage, a nice Englishman he was, in the carriage and I, I gave him the baby to hold to 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 the um, station master. Yeah.